Each and every day, thousands of Grand Union and Big Star team members perform many varied and important tasks in our offices, stores, and distribution centers. Though our jobs may require us to possess a variety of different skills, every job also requires that special attention be given to ensure the safety of ourselves, our fellow workers, and of course, the customers. In this episode, we'll take a close look at the importance of proper lifting in our distribution centers. Back injuries affect both you and the company. In order for you to avoid the agony of debilitating back injuries, it's important to understand first how your back is constructed and how it works every time you lift. A crippling or recurring back injury can prevent you from participating in normal leisure activities with family and friends. A bad back can also adversely affect your family's personal finances. After all, you could be laid up and out of work for some time. Back injuries also decrease productivity in your department, increase demands on your co-workers, and add to the ever-increasing cost of health care. These costs must be paid in full by the company. Wait a minute, why is this so important to me? I haven't any problem with my back. But that's the whole point. The key to avoiding back injuries is to prevent them from occurring in the first place. So what's so hard about lifting? You just bend over and that's it. Well, it may seem simple, but your back is actually an amazingly complex and fragile structure. Your spine is composed of bones called vertebrae, which are connected by discs. The discs are like flexible donuts with a thick gel inside. They allow the spine to bend with your movements and also serve as shock absorbers for your entire body. Running down the middle of your spine is the spinal cord. Now this cord is like a telephone cable which carries all kinds of messages to the brain. But the one message we're concerned with is the message of pain. When we strain our backs by lifting or bending the wrong way, we place an enormous amount of pressure on the muscles of the lower back and the discs themselves, and the result is, oh, a slip disc or back sprain. The nerve endings in the spinal cord then quickly carry the message of pain to the brain. I know what this is all about, it's the proper lifting technique. I'm young and I'm strong and my back can take it. I don't need a technique. Although having a strong, well-toned body is helpful in preventing back problems, age has nothing to do with it. In fact, statistics have proven that most back problems occur between the ages of 20 and 45, quickly transforming good productive years into crippling, pain-filled years. Let's take a closer look at exactly what happens to our backs when we lift improperly. When lifting, the body acts like a seesaw or teeter-totter with a center of balance at the base of the spine. When you stand up straight, your body is naturally balanced. However, when you bend your body forward, it's as though the right side of the seesaw is getting longer. An amount of force is then required to keep this imaginary board properly balanced as we bring the torso back to an upright position. The farther we bend over, the longer the right side of the imaginary board becomes, the further it extends from the balance point. Just like a seesaw, it now requires more weight on the left side in order to balance the board. Add the weight of an object to the weight of the upper body during the bending motion, and you now have significantly increased both the stress on your back and the amount of force needed to lift the object. For example, let's assume that the person in the illustration has an upper body weight of 100 pounds. When that person bends over, the amount of force needed just to return the body to the upright position would be about seven times the weight of his upper body, or about 700 pounds. That 700 pounds of force must be supplied by the muscles of the back and also by the ligaments. By adding the weight of an object to be lifted, for example, this 75-pound box, the force required to lift both the upper body and the box increases dramatically to about 1,300 pounds. That's more than 17 times the actual weight of the box. Imagine the strain on your back muscles and ligaments when this lifting motion is repeated over and over. I've been at this job 18 years, lifting this way every day. There's nothing wrong with my back.
well, consider yourself lucky. However, there are many people who are not as fortunate as you've been. These people lift improperly every day without thinking. They're completely unaware of the potential for serious back injury. They're just not aware of the pressure being put on their backs, and especially on their discs. When you put excessive pressure on your back through improper lifting, one of two things may occur. The first thing that you may experience is the discs flattening out and bulging. This condition puts pressure onto the nearby nerve endings. The result is often a pinched nerve, usually a temporary yet extremely painful condition that can be overcome by a long period of bed rest and muscle relaxants. The second condition that may result is far more severe. Through repeated abuse, the outer layers of one or more discs can rupture, and this can produce continual lower back pain as the ruptured disc rubs against the nerves of the spine. This condition is often permanent. That sounds kind of serious. How can I prevent that from happening to me? Well, that's simple. The best way to avoid back injuries is to learn the six steps to proper lifting. To lift properly, you should follow these six steps. Move close to the load. Bend your knees. Plant your feet firmly on the floor and pull the load close. Tighten your stomach muscles and keep your back straight. Lift with your legs and not your back. And hold the load close to you as you carry it. Let's illustrate these steps in greater detail. Step one, move as close to the load as possible. Step two, bend your knees and squat down while keeping your back as straight as possible. If you're lifting a large bulky item from a pallet or bay, you'll want to modify this motion slightly. You should bend forward slightly while bending your knees in order to grasp the item securely. This will allow you to get as close as possible to the load. Step three, with both feet planted firmly on the floor, pull the load toward you. Step four, tighten your stomach muscles and keep your back straight. Step five, use your leg muscles, not your back muscles, to bring yourself and the load to the upright position. Don't jerk the load. Step six, hold the load close to your body and keep your feet pointed in the direction you wish to go. Don't twist your body when holding a heavy load. Watch how nice and smooth this motion looks as we see all the steps done all at once. With a little practice, this technique shouldn't adversely affect your productivity at all. It's especially important to bend your knees when you lift in a confined space, like under a rack. In order to avoid excessive stretching when reaching for light items in high places, use a hook to bring the item to within easy reach. Be careful not to damage the products in any way. In order to put the load down, you simply reverse the procedure. Keep the load close to your body. Bend your knees and use your leg muscles to squat down. Keep your stomach muscles tight and keep your back straight. Plant both feet firmly on the floor and gently lower yourself and the load down, always keeping your back as straight as possible. Remember, even if you're just picking up something light, like a pencil, your back must still lift your entire upper body. So it's important to always lift properly. The way our warehouse is set up, I can't lift that way. The idea is to apply as many of these principles as possible, depending on your own situation. That really makes sense. Is that all there is to it? Well, there is one more important thing to remember. Injuries can also result from a poor job of general housekeeping in your work area. Trouble spots such as pallets left lying on the floor, debris or spills on the floor, and boxes themselves stored improperly or in the way that could all lead to serious injury. When no one takes the time to pick it up or clean it up, a potential hazard exists. It's common sense to either alert the person in charge or take care of it yourself. We want all Grand Union and Big Star employees to remain active and in good health. You 
are a valuable member of our team. We hope this program provides you with the information you'll need to avoid serious back injuries. Just remember when you lift, move close to the load, bend your knees, plant your feet firmly on the floor and pull the load close. Tighten your stomach muscles and keep your back straight. Lift with your legs and not your back. And hold the load close to you as you carry it. If you think before you lift, you'll always remember that safety never hurts.